in-depth analysis of the critters or whatever you want to call them. Were you fortunate enough to see anything up front, up close? And not until years later. And then what happened? Uh, it just, it was amazing. Absolutely amazing. They were, you know, taking things apart and putting things back together and the stuff they discovered and still haven't let out with, it's just, it's, it's mind boggling. It, it's almost, you really can't believe it when, when you first see it. It takes an awful lot of time to absorb. I was going to say, was it, information. was it difficult to comprehend the fact yeah. that, you know, you know that we were being visited? I mean, that's got to be kind of eerie. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, and, and to know also that there were things that were not otherworldly involved in it, too. You know, and how frustrating it was for those of us who are, do believe in that sort of thing. Yeah. To be told, you will lie no matter what. Were the occupants always of the gray type? No, no. Uh, some of them were, were. Some of the equipment ran by itself. It was run run remotely. Robotic. Yes. That's fascinating. Okay, I want to keep in touch with you, Richard. So, uh, drop me a little line, would you? I sure will. Okay, my friend. Thanks. Give me a call any time. Okay. It's a great story at Grimsley, isn't it? Yeah, and and you know. Uh, it's true, uh, of what he's saying, what he said word for word. I have other people that are giving me inside information and talking to me of experiences they've had and the Roswell connections and the things that are there. And, and the other thing was that back in 61, when I told my grandfather about what I had saw and all that, and he says, well, I know you're not crazy. And my grandfather had left home and when he was like 14 because back in the old days he got into some trouble got into some gunfight stuff with the cowboy boys you know like the the wild west thing and he was quite old and he told me that mamie eisenhower told him that there was aliens and that there was a truce being worked on and how he told me that was because mamie eisenhower was my grandfather's first cousin. Really? And she told him that there was aliens that didn't hmm. look like us, and there was some that looked like us, and that some had been injured and was working with us and sharing technology, and you wouldn't believe the things they could do. And we're getting some amazing phone calls tonight. Youngstown, Ohio, Steve, you're up with us. Hi, Steve. Hi, how are you doing? Good, Steve. Go ahead. My question is simple. Is there any correlation to time travel as it pertains to your theories on how there may be I, I don't I don't know what the technological capabilities are as far as our military and our government right now but in the future uh, are, are, is there a correlation as to our ability to, to, to wage these wars and, and, and do these things do you think there's any type of no. Well, as no. far as the time travel thing goes, remember that the Philadelphia experiment took place and that our government didn't think much of lives and sailors and things enough. They just left them on the boat and trying to transport it from one to the other, sort of the beam me up Scotty type program. And a lot of the soldiers died and were wedged in some of the materials of the ship and a lot of injuries took place and I know a um, scientist that has some of the tubes that was used during that experiment now you cannot imagine that they would stop doing those experiments but I think they went underground with those experiments and I think they were getting things from spacecraft that could actually appear and disappear because they could cloak into time zones, uh, transmit energies. And I think that right now we have spacecraft that are traveling out to the moon, traveling to Mars, and doing a lot of things that we're not being told. And I think we're just getting this little information, well, the lander's on the Mars and taking wonderful pictures. Well, I think we've been to Mars many, many times. I think there's human-like beings there. There's mining going on, the moon. There's equipment. I've got photographs that we got from a 
source that we wouldn't disclose, but there, it shows pictures of equipment mining on the moon. It shows walking paths from one point to another where you can see the trail like as if the animals or the deer would walk on a trail in the forest. And so if there's not life on the moon, and that, then what is traveling over this and maintaining these little trails? So, you see, the untruth is our enemy, and we need to get the truth, or we will be destroyed by not knowing it. Take another caller or two. Let's go to Vancouver, Canada, on the international line. Jay, you're Hi. got it. Go ahead. Hi. Uh huh. Fascinating stuff, eh? It really is. Beautiful. Oh it all starts to make sense when you put all the little pieces together and you look at the big picture, kind of. Sorry, I just ran up the stairs, so I'm a little bit out of breath. <laughs> um, Ed, what yeah. are the chances that uh, I'm seeing this stuff all the time without goggles or glasses? Well, it depends. If you're sober and you're seeing it, or oh, you're not. Now, I think it's real, and I've seen it when I didn't have glasses, and I'm not a drinking man, and I can see things without the glasses, but it's because I'm knowing what to look for. And once you start using the glasses a lot, your eyes become available to pick up more in the night than you could before. And this is something that the other people have experienced, and... And it's totally amazing the things that you can see without your glasses. But, you know, you have to tune in to things. You can't, you can't not pay attention. You, there's a way to just relax yourself, to open your mind and let the energy come in and you'll get more knowledge than you would ever. You can't just close your eyes, look at the ground, look up, look around and all that. You have to open your mind to what is around you. You have to be sensitive to the elements. I mean, a dog has a sense of smell that can smell so many things and so many uh, abilities and hearing that we supposedly don't have. But I think we have it, but we haven't learned to use it. And if you use your sensitivity, you will see the craft at various times, but you have to open your mind and you have to be in that frame. So, you know, that's, that's all I got. It's, that's what I feel. Remarkable information, Ed Grimsley. Ed's website, www.edgrimsley.com. I'll spell it for you. E-D-G-R-I-M-S-L-E-Y.com. UFO Wars. I'll be back in a moment with Open Lines. Plus, those of you in the Buffalo area, if you would check in with us on this special hotline number, 818-817-0021, for any eyewitness accounts of the very tragic plane crash we had earlier. And we'll be back in a moment. We'll have open lines for you this hour on Coast to Coast AM. And welcome back to Coast to Coast. I'm George Norrie. Here we are in the wee hours with open lines this hour. Let's go to our first-time caller line, Joplin, Missouri. Benton, welcome to the program, Benton. Hi. Uh, good evening. Yes. Uh, yes. A um, couple of things. Uh, one, I, I did clearly uh, see with two other people a UFO in the... Uh, uh, hills of Arkansas, where it is extremely dark, and uh, one was about three miles across, and one was about a mile across, and they um, hooked up together and looked like they were transporting cargo in the air. They were just uh, floating, and uh, after about 30 minutes, uh, they just took off in different directions. How did you estimate how big they were? Um, we were in uh, a mountain range, and uh, we just estimated it from the distance. 